Hey guys, welcome back to another First Budget Friday. I'm Cody, this is Val. If you've been around for a while, um, you already know that we've been documenting our journey towards debt freedom for quite some time now. And we've been on our journey towards debt freedom even longer than that. But very recently, um, we've wanted to start sharing a little more of things we wish we would have known going into it, um, maybe even before getting into debt in the first place. Okay. So that's what this series is, is a look at the ideal situation if you're just starting out trying to figure out how to get a handle on your money and hopefully do more things right than not. So today we are going to be talking about the difference between financial success and financed success. So as Cody said, this is part of the First Budget Friday series. I will link the playlist in the description down below if you want to go back and watch some of the other videos. Um, and I think this is a really great topic to talk about because when we were young, we used to look at people we thought were successful and didn't realize that a lot of that success was financed. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to understand the difference between financial success and financed success. Yeah. So in simple terms, financial success is when you've been diligent with your money for an extended period of time and you've created a situation where you've covered all your bases in terms of saving for retirement um, or schooling or anything like that mm -hmm. and you now have enough freedom with it that you can start doing the fun things you know maybe get a, a fancy car go on some vacations you get a mm -hmm. dirt bike or something like that if that's your jam yeah um, and financed success is when you do the same thing except usually you're really young and you go into a massive amount of debt to make it happen so you still have the, the nice, all, all the fun toys and all the fun vacations and stuff, but you're buying it with money that's not yours. You're borrowing from your future to pay for your present, mm -hmm. usually at a premium price. Yeah, and um, I, was, I was guilty of that. Yeah, and me too. And also <laughs> at the expense of your ability to save for your later years. Mm -hmm. I can remember a point in my life where my car was financed, obviously. It was a brand new one that I should not have been approved for. Uh, my laptop at the time was financed. Uh, almost all of my clothes were bought on a credit card, so they were all so financed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so was my makeup. I think just about everything I owned was financed at that point in my life. Mm -hmm. It was not a. Yeah, I was. I was. I looked so successful on the outside, and I was not the image. Of, like I was not somebody you wanted to model your life after. Yeah. At that time. Yeah, I did. Uh much the same. I had a truck that was way too expensive for me. Um, my stuff was more electronics, video games, lays around the house on a Sunday through Sunday type of situation. Mm -hmm. um, and all of it bought on credit cards where I was carrying a balance, give, bought with loans, bought through something like an easy home situation where you go into a store, you pick your stuff and they say, cool, for $700 a month, you can have all of this right now. I did that too. <laughs> I financed my furniture through Easy Home. Don't do that. <laughs> yeah. So all that is to say that we were living our life from a sense of entitlement mm -hmm. where we hadn't earned the things that we bought. Um, like I said, we were borrowing from our future to pay for our present and we looked good, but financially we were in a lot of trouble mm -hmm. and we were not able to do a lot of the things that would have benefited us down, down the road. Mm -hmm. um, and looking back, it's a lot of stuff that now I regret doing it much more than I think in the moment I would have regretted not doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and all this is kind of to say like, what, what got me thinking about this, I was uh, reconnected with somebody that I'd worked with years and years and years ago and we were trading stories, talking about the old days and it put me in mind of a guy I worked with, um, someone that I really looked up to because I thought he was successful. He was living the dream. He was like kind of my boss's boss, um, basically in the hierarchy. And he had the nice jacked up truck, the nice sports car, the quad, the dirt bike, the sea doo the skidoo, the beach house, the cabin, the nice condo in the city. The guy had it all. Um, come to find out through getting to know him that he never got to use any of it because he was always at work because he was one missed paycheck away from all of it being repoed. Mm -hmm. And also come to find out that he could not take a job, like he could not afford to work at a place that paid him less than slightly more than double what I was making. Mm -hmm. um, and that was a huge wake up call for me. That, that was 
kind of from that point on, that was something I wanted to be a lot more diligent of, of pursuing. So that, that was also, it, it was something I wanted to share with you guys as well, because this is information that I could have used at a much younger age to be much better off now. Yeah. If we had known in our twenties, the difference between financial success and finance success, because to me in my early twenties, they were the same thing. I was like, if you look good, you smell good, you're successful. Uh, and now in my thirties, I've come to realize that is not the case. I would rather buy a hundred dollar used scratched up, beat up table for our dining room off of Facebook Marketplace. And I say that because that's currently what we're looking for. Yeah, we're literally before we hit record, we were looking for stuff on Marketplace. Um, rather than go, you know, finance a, a really beautiful $2,500 dinette because, you know, our- You can get some nice dinettes. There's local furniture stores right up the street from us right now where it's like, don't pay for 50 months and get 50% off when you buy XYZ. And it's mm -hmm. like, it sounds so tempting. You're like 50 months, oh man, that's easy. I got lots of time to pay it. No. And then you forget about it, and then you don't pay it, and then you finance something else, and then you finance something else, yeah. and all of them seem to need to be paid for on the same day. <laughs> At the end of the day, that $150 used table is going to provide the same service to me as the $2,500 mm -hmm. table. It's still a table we can shoot videos at. It's still a table we can eat dinners at. The difference, it's still a table we can turn into a blanket fort when our kid wants a tent. The difference is, is that it's more than $2,000 less than I'd spend at the furniture store. And that's money that can then be reinvested towards our goals, whether it's mm -hmm. paying off debt, savings, retirement, whatever it is. It's a total mind shift. Yeah. Or just if you'd rather spend your money on something beside the dining room table. Yeah. I mean, two, two, $2,500 is a lot of money. Yeah. When they tell you you don't have to pay for 50 months or break it into 50 monthly payments, it sounds much more achievable. But mm -hmm. don't let that trick you. <laughs> just because you can afford the payments does not mean the thing is a good idea. That's right. So I think that's about it that we wanted to get across for this one. Yeah, that's it. I think we'll leave you guys here. So Short and sweet again. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found some value in it. Um, as always, if you like it, like it. If you don't like it, dislike it twice. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. We'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye. Bye.